Jumping in on Manx Radio with Howard and Chris Kane. Mince pies, Harley, mistletoe, pud, 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 pud. What are you doing? Christmas wrapping. Appalling. What do you mean up here? It's Christmas everywhere. Yeah, but it ain't no Christmas like Christmas in Harlem. No. Every gal strutting with her bow through the streets covered white with snow. Happy smiles everywhere you go. Christmas night in Harlem. Black and tan feeling mighty good in that old colored neighborhood. Here and now be it understood. Christmas night in Harlem. Everyone is gonna sit up until after three. Everyone will be all lit up like a Christmas tree. Come on now, every cold black Joe, greet your sweet neat the mistletoe with a kiss and a hidey ho. Christmas night in Harlem. Hee <laughs> hee, man! Dog, why did Santa Claus leave in your stocking? Let me see. There's an orange, a jar of kink out, and man, look at that slide trombone. Ain't it pretty? Yeah, but it might not sound so pretty. Let me hear you toot it. I'm glad to be back in this festivity. Ah, oh, you said it, Mr. T. It's Christmas night in Harlem. When it's Christmas night in Harlem, man, you drew the bib for me. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good old it party up there in Harlem, doesn't it? Jack T. Gordon there, fantastic with none other than Mr. Whiteman, Paul Whiteman and his orchestra and Christmas time in. What's that chinking I can hear, by the way? Sherry glasses. Sherry glasses. Christmas time, not in Harlem, but up here at Manx Radio Towers. And a fresh bottle of uh, a manzanilla, by the looks of things. Very, very exciting. Exactly, yeah. Well, it is the it is the jumping in Christmas uh, jazz party, uh, which is always, well, a bit different. So it's, you know, it's still a little bit of modern jazz, some older jazz, but everything with a sort of festive theme, uh, all accompanied by the traditional repast, which is uh, a small glass of sherry, some satsumas, uh, some crisps, uh, oh, hula hoops actually are the traditional fare to eat at the jumping in Christmas jazz party. And, mince pies, uh, mince, mince pies. pies, and also some uh, some uh, little uh, Swiss biscuits made especially uh, by my uh, better half. Yeah, very so good. what can I think? Yeah, what can I say? Looking forward to it. You say it's something different. It's something exactly the same as we've been doing for years at this well, exactly. time, to be honest. And uh, started as a tradition with dear old dad, God bless him, dear jazz man Jim, who I'm sure will be tuning in there from above. So, dad, we're thinking of you at this time, of course, as at all times, and mum too, as I'm sure everyone's thinking of their family and sitting down 
with a good old pop to a glass of something nice and some good music in the background. Absolutely. And uh, you, you may or may not have had a chance for one of these so far. I mean, I didn't, but uh, looking at America, there could be an awful lot of these in the next couple of days. Frosty and his snowman. Uh-oh. <laughs>
much money do you boys average a streak? Uh, let's see. Uh, now there's, uh, I would say about 50 cents a street. There's a dollar. Move down a couple of streets. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Don't see them so much anymore, but it used to be a Christmas tradition. Below zero, of course, there with Laurel and Hardy. Cooey, Mr. Whiteman. Oh, it was an had... end joke, of course, because uh, and, and, and it's you need to see the picture because Paul Whiteman, of course, was the very spit, or vice oh, versa, Oliver, Harder, of Oliver, Oliver Hardy. Oliver Hardy, and we just had him before, of course, in the opening track. Exactly, very appropriate, and still, still love that one. I must admit, I still was, I still always got really upset when Stan's harmonium gets crushed under a big lorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it just sort of seems such a shame, but it is a it is a classic, I must admit. And uh, and of course, before that, we had uh, Frosty the Snowman, yeah. and snow is coming. Whether it reaches us, we wait to see. But uh, it's a big old storm over at the other side. Oh, stateside, yeah. Where, whether it's blowing this way across the, um, the who knows? It warms up quite a bit, so you it'll don't generally be it. rain, wind by yeah. the time it reaches us. But exactly. Hey ho! More of the same, in fact, one way or another. You're listening to the Jumping In Jazz Christmas Party with Chris and myself, H. Uh, all things sort of jazzy, older and uh, younger as well. So it's not all just the modern side of things, as you can tell. There's all sorts of stuff, and uh, all fueled with a nice glass of. Uh, yeah, we are on a nice glass of the sherry. Some of the old. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, some of the old. Um, what are they? Hula hoops. That's the word I'm after. Hula hoops. And uh, yeah, small glass of sherry and some tangerines, and then there's a couple of mince pies to come. So. Uh, mm. What more mm. do you want? Do you want bells on it? Well, mm. okay, here they are. Not bad Jingly, idea. of course. Uh, the inimitable 
Fat Swallower, of course. And uh, as I've said before on this programme and others, namely Sweet and Swing, I would love to have seen Fat Swallower live. You just Wouldn't get him. you just love to meet him? He exudes joy. Well, yeah, and you just think even if he was live now and performing, you think he'd still pull in a great audience because he, he would sort of, you know, he, he might have a slightly different style or something, but he's sort of down, he's sort of really with it and sort of quite cool and sort of just with the audience so much that you think he'd go down a storm and must have been a great entertainer in a live environment. Particularly you just know he doesn't switch it on, though, don't you? you know that's just him. He is absolutely on the ball, picks up everything, plays brilliant piano and has a great time doing it. What more could you ask for? What more could you ask for indeed? Well, what about this one then? Hail, we now sing joy, which sounds like it's going to be really something straight from the uh, Bible hymn book, but it's not. It's given a slightly uh, modern twist here with the Art Ensemble of Chicago. Nice city. Hail, we now sing joy For the mighty Dharma King For the one who shows the way To the spirit of love we share Hail, we now sing joy for the mighty warrior, for the one who stops and holds all the elements of despair. Hail, we now sing joy for the mighty humankind, for the one who knows the way to enlightenment. Thank you. 
mighty Dharma King, for the one who shows the way to the spirit of love we share. Hail, we now sing joy for the mighty warrior, for the one who stops and holds all the elements of despair. Hail, we now sing joy for the mighty humankind, for the ones who know the way to enlightenment is there. <laughs> yeah. The art ensemble of Chicago. Actually, pretty mainstream for them, that really. Uh, it is actually for them. Some of their stuff is way out there, as they say, which is um, no problem on this show, it has to be said. But, you know, we thought you'd better tone it down a bit with it being Christmas. And some of their earlier stuff, um, yeah, was, was sort of more accessible in many ways. And that definitely one has a great, lovely walking bass line there, cracking stuff. Quite a recent one, that as well, actually, to be said. Even better, even better. Uh, wonderful sound, that. Uh, very Christmassy. And, yeah, well, we're staying Christmassy. I'm just trying to... As Are I'm you fiddling yet, with your plums over yeah, there? Oh, no, it's a satsuma. Most plums are fiddling with me satsumas, yeah, which is... Uh, you, know, you, you need your vitamin C. But if you think your plums are a duffer, then maybe you need sugar plums. Well, oh, that'd be nice.
Nice indeed. It had a certain vibe about it. You were saying... A certain vibe, yeah, very good. Yes, who did that remind you of? Modern Jazz Quartet. Indeed, that was, of course, the inspiration behind this particular quartet. The classical jazz quartet set up in the early 2000s. Anybody like to have a guess as to who was playing that? Uh, Anyone? Anyone? Hello? I meant you when I said anyone, mainly you, yes. Uh, no, I don't know. No, I just thought I thought it was the MJQ, I must admit. No, it, uh, it, as I say, a tribute to them. They did three or four albums. They did one of the Nutcracker, mm. which mm. that came from, of course. They did one of Bark, one of Rachmaninoff, and the Christmas one, which was a sort of compilation, which is what this has come off, which has uh, six tracks from Nutcracker, one of Bark, and one from Messiah. And they are Kenny Barron at the piano. Kenny Barron. Kenny Barron. Yeah. Stephen Harris on the vibes, Ron Carter on the bass, and Lewis Nash. At the drums, very nice indeed. Not a bad lineup. Not a bad lineup at all. It's all Christmassy, uh, all the way here on uh, jumping in with our Christmas jazz special, and uh, we do have uh, quite a few Christmas comestibles. So, like I said, sherry, satsumas, uh, crisps, and such like. The one thing we don't have to roast, sadly, is uh, chestnuts. So, uh, Carla Blay might be able to help out with a bit of musical chestnutting, if nothing else. <laughs>
Ah, there we go. The old roast nuts chesting on an open fire, as they say. Something Which, like that. Not, not, yeah. not exactly like that. Close chestnuts enough, though. roasting. Close enough. I have had some chestnuts this year, but um, not on an open fire. I had to say I did them in the Argo. Because uh, I didn't have an open fire to roast them on, um, but I do remember back in the day, when uh, yes, when with there was a shovel. A, someone, someone with a shovel on the fire, wonderful. I could, I could never. And they the were, smell just permeated throughout the house. Oh, it's it? brilliant! You get the smell, fantastic. and they'd always be a bit blackened, and usually you know a little bit of coal with them or something. Never seemed to make any odds. They still tasted great. Hot chestnuts, hot chestnuts, can buy a bag or two. Oh, marvelous! Oh, if you buy the ones, yeah, again, you do see them now in London and other the roasters cities, are back on the streets. They're back they? on the streets. The yeah. only problem, have you ever bought any? Not, remember, no, not in a while. Yeah, sometimes I mean, the top ones are all peeled and look nice. Then you get in and they're solid. Down yeah, the exactly. So that's that's the trap I've fallen into with them. I bought a, a poke for whatever it is, and the top ones are peeled and lovely. You eat those, then underneath all the other ones are fairly cold, or in shells and are rock hard and virtually impossible to get out. <laughs> uh. Uh, other great Christmas traditions, of course. Everybody used to look forward to the arrival of the Christmas Radio Times, and still in do. fact, still, still do. do. Uh, whether people use it quite as much because the way that we consume uh, our entertainment has changed somewhat. So it's not just uh, one or two, or even three or four or five channels, but uh, countless channels, and a lot of them are available through your computer or streamed, or you know, on time delay, all kinds of things so maybe not quite the same use but what did you used to head for first you'd head for christmas day to see what time more and wise were on let's make this christmas the happiest christmas the happiest christmas of them all Let's have more singing and happier smiles. Bells ringing that you can hear for miles and miles and some Christmas. Some far distant Christmas, no matter what else may befall. You will all remember. Was the happiest Christmas of all. Hey, Eric, I see you're doing your Christmas cards. Yeah. There's thousands of them. They must cost you a fortune. Oh, they don't cost me anything, eh? I send off the Christmas cards people sent me last year. Well, that's not very nice, is it? Well, they're very nice cards. Yeah, but I don't see how you can do it. I mean, take this one, you send it to Sid and Dick. He's got something written on the inside. Wishing you a Merry Christmas, Uncle Harry and Rose. Yes, well, I get round that quite easily. I just add a few words. Add a few words? Yes, I put Eric after wishing you a Merry Christmas. Well, how about Uncle Harry and Rose? Well, I write, also send their love after it. It works very well. I see, but Sid and Dick don't know Uncle Harry and Rose. Yeah, I know, but I think they ought to. Especially Sid, because you know what an awkward fellow Sid is. Oh, the whole thing is simply not right. No, but it's cheap. But it's still going to cost a lot of money for the stamps. <laughs> no, you know nothing. I don't put any stamps on. Well, that means the people have to pay double. No, 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 you see. I put any old address on the front, one that doesn't exist. Yes. And on the back, I write, if undelivered, return to, with the address of the people I'm sending the card to. Well, that's not the spirit of Christmas. No, but I'm sending you a very nice Christmas card. Are you really? Yes. It's, it's an old one that I had from George Bartholomew. George Bartholomew? Hmm. But I hate him. Oh, what a pity. Because he sends his love to you this year on my card. Let's make this Christmas the happiest Christmas No matter what else may befall You will all This was a recording, wasn't it? Yes. What have you got makeup on for? Well, I'm only wearing lipstick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good job there's no cameras in here, that's all I can say. <laughs> oh, classic stuff, classic stuff. Morecambe and Wise, which, well, for so many years, like you say, was the absolute... Which was you'd set your clock, you'd set your day by everyone sitting around to watch Morgan and Wise. It was that big, I think, in the day. They were massive, those programs, and uh, you still see them repeated on various channels now. So you can knock them around, I'm sure you can find them on YouTube and places as well. But they'll invariably be repeated 
and some of those classic sketches. Mr. Preview, I think, possibly top slip for so many people as being one of the all-time greats, but I was really like the one where they were, did the dance in the kitchen as well with the sausages and the wah wah ah, making the breakfast. Bam, 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 the, yeah, stripper. the stripper. Oh, wonderful stuff. <sighs> wonderful stuff. Uh, okay. The Mastermind is worth watching too. You That's YouTube it. One. You can yeah. pull up, in fact, there's a couple. You can pull up them and pull up next to it the two Ronnies doing their Mastermind sketch. Both will make you cry with laughter. Fantastic stuff. Super stuff indeed. Um, we'll have something a little bit more, oh, a little bit quieter, a bit more reflective as I have a little, um, mm, mm-hmm. a small sip of sherry. Very nice indeed. Um, oh, Little Town of Bethlehem by the, uh, very nice indeed. We had a lovely chat with them here on Jumping In a couple of years back. Booger Vesseltoft. <laughs>
Lovely stuff. Booger Vesseltoft at the piano. Solo, as it were. Oh, Little Town of Bethlehem from an album he recorded a few years back, I think on ACT, called Snow on My Piano, which, as it might suggest, was indeed a collection of winter and Christmas classics just featuring Booger and his piano. He does so much with electronica and he's well known with working with Sitzel Endresen and of course we've seen him with Rimden recently where there's usually quite a bit of electronica. He loves tinkering around on the inside of electric pianos but he can play lovely straight acoustic jazz piano as well. And it was actually called Don't Snow on My oh, Piano. Don't, oh, was snow. Don't, don't Snow on My Close Piano. Enough. Do Snow but, on but, piano. Yes, but good stuff. But I'll tell you who we haven't seen, and uh, through the wonders of technology, if you have this on your phone, you can pop up something called Plane Finder, and you can see exactly where the big man in the red suit and the white hat is so far on his travels. Marvellous what technology can tell you. But I wonder whether he likes a bit of bebop. "'Twas the black before Christmas, and all through the dawn. The scene was deserted but for old pops and mom. There they sat hung in their big easy chair, goofed on eggnog, sherry, and beer. Sis and little Junior lay snoozing in bed while visions of rap tracks danced in their heads. Mobs jumped up and said, Pops, let's quit at the bed. We can't let Santa dig us with our eyes all red. Then out on the stoop, ooh-wee, such a clatter. Pops split to the porthole to see what's the matter. His heart did the jumps and he fell straight back when his glimmers fell on a red Cadillac. Stashed in front was a cat cool as any, with a red beaver hat and a red cashmere benny. His ground pads were suede shoes, and his red tweed vine cost heavy dues. He wore a red on red shirt and a white mink tie, some crazy rimmed glasses that covered one eye. Old Pop's peepers grew large, round, and white as he dug this crazy vista on Christmas Eve night. The cat leaped from his short, and he lay down his sack. He began wailing like mad, the cool Applejack. Then up to the rooftops the Cadillac flew, and the cat in red followed on through. Pops was wigged behind this crazy scene, and before he was straight, down came the cat right through the chimney grate. A bag of jive he had on his back as he stood digging Pop who was blowing his stack. His eyeballs were hid behind some cool black shades. When Pops dug this action, he knew this cat was made. A king-sized cigarette hung from his chops as he eased up close and sounded on Pops. I'm the bebop Santa from the cool North Pole, and I've been down since the days of old. I'm known all over from here to eternity And a stud's mighty square if he don't dig me So cast thy peepers into my righteous bag and see What insane object I shall lay upon thee Here's a record by Diz Cut when he was two A real boss arrangement of Uliaku for mom's a mink outfit, Chanel number no. five. And for you little kitties, my new book on jive. So that's it, Pops, Santa did shout. Then he buttoned his cashmere and quickly cut out. <laughs> Oh, 
poor Pops was wigging and was out of his head to dig this wild character who wore all the red. He ran to the table to cop him a drink, to quiet his nerves and to help him to think. Just then from below he heard a voice shout, Have a crazy cool Christmas, but don't get knocked out. Solid. <laughs> Solid. Solid, indeed. Great voice. Sweet Daddy Low with the Blue Note Ad Hoc Orchestra, including lots of well-known people for a special on Blue Note uh, for Christmas, uh, unique new recordings for Christmas a few years ago. Great stuff. Uh, it is great stuff. Gosh, look at the time going. It will be Christmas before you know it, uh, it has to be. So, so I do hope you are um, organised. Have you got your presents wrapped? Uh, have you got your turkey stuffed? Have you got your nuts roasted by the fire? If you're going to have them, have you got everything else you need together? All your ducks in a row? If you're or you're like us, are you sitting in front of the fire with a glass of something? panicking because you still have to do all that before tomorrow morning. That's pretty much the way. Whichever way you look at it, it's not long. Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Why? Santa Claus is coming to town, gather round. He's making a list, checking it twice, he's going to find out who's naughty and nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're away. He knows if you've been bad or good, so So be good for goodness sake. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. With little tin horns, little toy drums, Rudy Toot Toots and Rummy Tum Tums, Santa Claus is coming to town. Curly-head dolls, a toddle and coo, elephant boats and kitty cars too. Santa Claus is coming to town. The kids and girls in Boyland will have a jubilee. They're gonna build a toy land town all around the Christmas tree. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm a telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Good, so be good for goodness day. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming. You mean the big fat man with the long white beard? He's coming to town. Hmm. He is. Only a matter of hours. And it wouldn't Fantastic, be Christmas without Bing telling us, would it, really? Oh, can't have Christmas without Bing, or Perry, or Teresa, and you'll find some of the others... Well, you'll find them on Sweet and Swing through the year. You'll find lots of fantastic modern jazz here and jumping in through next year, 2023. Starting off, of course, with a look back at some of the great albums of 2022. So many to try and pick out. We're going to spread it over two shows, but and even then, I think we'll only have scratched the surface. But we'll leave you with uh, somebody who's been a friend of the show for some while, and in fact, we dedicated a whole show to him, but he's also been a fantastic influencer and an educational leader in Scotland, bringing many, many great Scottish jazz Talents Alive, Tommy Smith. Terrific stuff. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, have a wonderful time. Have a very, very Merry Christmas. Have a Happy New Year. And, of course, more importantly, a healthy one as well. And we will see you the other side. Have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Bye.
Thank <laughs> you. 